Good morning and welcome to Love Every Moment, coming to you today from Salina, Kansas. Today's verse is 1 John 2, 4. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Well, this is a pretty strong statement and is basically the opposite of last week's verse, which I have the link up here, which says this is how we do come to know him, that we keep his commandments. This one is the opposite, but it adds more to it by saying, if you say we know, if we say we know him, but we don't keep his commandments, we are a liar and the truth is not in us. And remember that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so if the truth is not in us, that's also saying Jesus is not in us. So it's pretty serious. Now, John used uh, the same word liar back in his gospel and John uh, chapter 8, John has a pretty long argument with some Pharisees, and towards the end of the argument, in verse 55, Jesus says, And you have not come to know him, but I know him, and if I say that I do not know him, I will be a liar like you. But wait, he continues, But I do know him, and keep his word. They go together. When we know him, we're going to keep his word. It's hand in hand. It's a natural cause and effect. Now remember these Pharisees kept a whole bunch of commandments <laughs> right down to the nitty gritty, but they didn't keep his will. They didn't really know him. And so they weren't really keeping the commandments the way God intended. So we really have to know him. Now back to our main verse. So uh, remember that last week I took us to an interesting parable of the ten virgins and showed how they really needed to know the expectation of the bridegroom. Now let's look at the next one, which is the parable of the talents. So just to summarize, this master had three named slaves in this particular parable. He gave one five talents, another two talents, another one one talent. The one that was given five talents and the one that was given two each doubled their money uh, when the master came back from his trip. And the master praised both of them equally. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter to the joy of your master. He said to both of them. Now, the one who was given one talent basically just sat on it, didn't do anything with it, and gave it back. He didn't steal the money, he gave it back, but he didn't do what was expected. The expectation was that you do business somehow, make this money grow. That was the expectation. Then in verse, oh, where is it here? 26, his master answered and said to him, you wicked, lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank. And on my arrival, I would have received my money back with interest. The master didn't say exactly, this is exactly what to do with the money. The, the expectation was general. Do business with this, make it grow. And this slave did not do even the least amount to make that money grow. So he really didn't know his master well enough. He should have. He's a slave, and he should know that uh, he needed to do business with it. One thing to take out of this is this was a general expectation and not a really specific step-by-step -step instruction. Sometimes the Lord gives us commandments that are general and how we fulfill his will, he leaves, us up, leaves it up to us. For example, the Lord might say, I want you to go show love to that person, but may leave it up to us to figure out how to do that. If we don't know, he'll help us. So back to our main verse, the whole idea that John wants us to do is a little self-reflection. Am I keeping his commandments? And if not, there's something wrong with my love relationship. So if I have that love relationship, I should notice, hey, I'm loving more than I ever used to. My potty mouth is cleaning up and other things. So let's choose to love him because if we love every moment, we're gonna love every moment. I'm your average wretch and I hope you have a great week.